Hello, I'm Brigham Larson, and uh, this is uh, Piano Talk Live. Well, we're not live today, we're recording for posting later. And uh, what we do, if you haven't seen a Piano Talk before, is uh, every Wednesday morning at 6 a.m. we get together and talk about whatever happens to be going on in the shop. So today, we're, we're kind of getting a potpourri of uh, where we are in the shop. We talked about a new experiment we're trying with sanding down sharps already um, I'm doing them kind of uh, you can see them over there I'll turn the camera around where we're um, setting them down starting at 100 grit going down to 400 grit and then we're going to experiment I've heard of other technicians using shoe polish so uh, I'm going to try that see how it works put the shoe polish on and give it a while to soak into the wood and then and then uh, take it off hopefully hopefully it won't leave a greasy feeling. I don't know. We'll experiment see how that goes. We've tried, we've tried other things and, and we haven't been unsatisfied with um, the results of other uh, paints and, and lacquers and things, but we'll try the shoe polish, see if we like it even better. Um, in a little bit we're going to talk about rebuilding trap work, the kinds of things that we do when, uh, when we rebuild piano like this, or even a lot of times when we re even refurbish piano, we'll completely redo the trap work. But for now, we're talking about um, hanging hammers and some of the some of the compromises and um, uh, you know there's theory and there's practice and and today we're talking about the practice of of hanging hammers. So let's uh, Don, if you don't mind if I if I kind of get everybody up to speed on what we're doing here. Yeah. So <clears throat> the goal of hanging hammers is uh, is you want to perfect straight line on, on two dimensions, well, you can see it over here. This, uh, we've got a straight edge back here, so all of these are in straight line, and then, and then you've got a straight edge here that, uh, that we'll see, we'll see how that, those are, those are gluing. So when, uh, when the hammers are all the way up to the strings, I want to be able to sight down. Let me get the camera in there. Don looks like Don did a pretty good job. Of course, they're not spaced or squared yet, but we have a we have a nice straight line here. Get that straight edge there, and we've got a same thing here. So that's a that's a good hammer hanging job there. Now we've just got to uh, fix issues with. Um, With alignment. So, um, so the first time, so let's let's back up a little bit. So the first time um, the hammers hammers were put on, uh, I think there was some like some pressure still. I think there were the, bubbles maybe the, and stuff in there. There were bubbles and things were pushing and were, back as uh -huh. I've said it. it would, the, there was still pressure there, and as it would. As it would cure, it would, it would kind of misalign. Push, push the hammer up. So there are about 20 of them that were that were out of alignment. So um, so redoing those. Um, these these look good. He he had them all dry fit and they were perfect. They were perfect in a straight line. But then as they were as the glue was curing, it uh, it changed the dimension and um, and so that's that's just part of the learning process. That's all right. So we'll redo. <coughs> that's that's those hammers that are that are uh, rebuilt. Yeah. So so Don, you you already redrilled all of these. Mm -hmm. Took hammer all the butts. hammer butts out and redrilled the holes. And redrilling redrilling the hammer butts is kind of an art. Um, For sure. <laughs> yeah. Basically, I'll I'll just summarize it real quick. Basically, it's finding the exact spot in the vise on the drill press where every hammer goes and you've got to you've got to memorize exactly where that hammer butt goes in the depth so that so that it's the same for every hammer butt and then set the depth gauge on the drill press and that. so so every hole is basically got the square both this dimension and that dimension is both 90 degrees you've got the tilt on the table is it's going to be 90 degrees and then you've got the uh, the way you put the hammer butt in the vise, it's 90 degrees to the to the uh, 
to the bit. bit. And then the depth is set and drill them out so it's all exactly the same. And then, uh, and then this right here, what Don will do is, is he'll put one in on, on either side and then this will act as a straight edge to, uh, to know exactly where to, where to cut it off. We've got the Jap that Japanese pull saw, yeah, which has a very, very, very thin curve. Saws, the, the American tradition of, of saw making is the cut is on the push stroke, and you have to have a much thicker blade for that. And the Japanese way of doing it is the cut is on the pull stroke, so you can have a, you can have a almost flimsy saw. Which uh, <clears throat> so with this, you know, this wouldn't this is this would be way too thin to do uh, to do a cut on the push stroke. It would it would bend too easily. And but, so the advantage of that is you can have a very precise, very thin curve. So this is really good, uh, really good saw to use for that. And then of course Don will dry fit them again, make sure that, and, and work by middles, kind of paying attention as you go, is the glue messing with the height or... Um, One thing that I started doing on the second time through was I would put two drops of glue in and I'd try and make them because depending on how you fast <coughs> you squeeze it, you can get big drops and little drops and you want just a, a little extra so that it makes a little color on the top. Mm -hmm. But I would put a little, you know, use PR panel wire in there the cut off things and I'd just like you would with your finger if you were doing a surface you'd smooth it out for the mating surfaces I would do that in there so it's not just a drop in the bottom and it's it's burying a bubble mm -hmm. I just smoothed it all out so that it the squeeze is easier and it's mm -hmm. not as as apt to trap the bubble and you have you have already done the knurling too mm -hmm. right well I've, as I dry fit it it may need to be knurled again because you knurl it and then that those wood fibers kind of relax and then it gets tight again so mm -hmm. you know you want it to be plenty loose I mean not plenty loose but not wiggly loose but you want yeah. it really to not to be, be binding to so go that, in and out yeah well the knurling gives not. little air channels for that air to escape yeah one trick I learned from a colleague of ours uh, the other night is when when you've got the hammer shank attached to the hammer then you take a file and just go on one side and then another stroke on the other side so you've got a little bit of a of a angle, An angle and going and so that way it's got more room for the glue to set and for the glue to travel up the shank mm. and also you have a little bit more play to adjust mm. as you, yeah, as you exactly wet and fit it if that's the turf cool okay so so we're getting close to this and this is it'll it'll be a beautiful hammer jaw. This is going to be a, a factory quality hammer jaw here. So now, now what we're dealing with is, uh, this is this is what I was talking about a few minutes ago, where you've got, where you've got to deal with, where you've got theory and then you've got practice. So something that, uh, when you've got both the strings in, in alignment as, as, as it should be according to theory, right, you want, you want a basically straight, straight line, you want the shortest distance um, from the from the tuning pin here, all the way down to where it where it goes uh, around the, the the bridge. You know what I'm talking about? The speaking length, speaking side of the bridge. You know what I'm talking about? Where's the bridge? Okay. So you want you want a straight line from. Uh, well, ideally, from the tuning pin all the way down to the to the bridge, so that you don't have any like pent up energy in the string that that could shift one way or the other. So the way this piano was designed um, is, uh, hey, Emma, how's it going? You've got uh, you got these bolts here, which which in part tell you where you want your strings. You've also, like I said, you, you want that straight line. So you, you can move the strings one way or the other slightly. You've got a certain amount of, of wiggle room of where to put the strings. And, and of course, Don, Don did a beautiful job of, of putting these strings on. 
and all of that has to be set before before the uh, before everything is set, including the the dampers. Of course, we're not gonna we're not gonna put the dampers on, and then decide oh we're gonna change the location of the strings because then we're off with the dampers. So we gotta do the strings first. See that? Okay, but then the way this this action is designed, all of these all of these hammers. When the, when the hammers are, are perfectly straight up and down and just going straight back and forth the way they're supposed to, now they hit a little bit to the left. Everything is just kind of shifted in the action to the left. Okay, so now we've got to make some decisions. What are we going to fudge a little bit? That's, that's kind of the name of the game with really all piano work is, is making decisions on, on what to fudge because, I mean, especially where we're dealing with Something that was designed a hundred years ago, built or designed even further than that, built built over a hundred years ago. Um, okay, how do we how do we fudge things? What do you think? What are some of the factors that we can fudge? We can either bend them this way, or we can turn them. Turn the hammers, but then if you turn them, you're not hitting all three strings square. So all of them, so if they're, if you're saying if the hammer butt is still straight this way, but all of the hammers yeah, are over like this? Yeah, you're right, right. If you yaw, turn the yaw, then it wouldn't be hitting squarely, but if, I don't know, what you okay. can do. What you so that's, do. One, that's one possibility. There, there are some drawbacks to that. Maybe yeah. we'll talk about that in a minute, but, but that's one thing that you can fudge a little bit. What are some other things you can fudge? Sometimes you can fudge the hammer butt so that the whole thing yeah. leans. Right. In this case, it's a little harder, but it does <coughs> fudge a little. Sure. That's another one. Any other ideas? Could you fudge the whole rail in the brackets? So you've got the the brackets attached to the uh, the the bolts, and then mm -hmm. the rail loosen up these screws a little bit, and then just kind of move it. Probably you might get a millimeter out hmm. of that. Then you'd you'd be gaining a millimeter globally. Yeah. Okay. Any other ideas? I can do one more. Can you adjust the brackets the action uh, screws into? Like down down here and up there. Yeah. Yeah, I suppose you could. Tweaking just a little bit. You can also there again. Everything is going to tweak one way or the other that right. way, and so what you gain here, you're going to lose over on that end. So are you finding that the things are generally straight in these two sections? It's just the but top not, section. Not up on the top. Is that right? Yeah. Okay. So yeah, as I look at this, this is fairly. I mean, at least from what I can tell here. These are fairly, fairly aligned. I mean, there's there's a little bit of movement that needs to happen one way or the other, but they're fairly centered. And it's up here. Does everybody see how they're um, how they're all kind of off to that direction? So that's that's what we're trying to fix. That's the issue that we're trying to fix. String to the right. And then like down here. Is that because you, you corrected the the string straightness? No, I think I think it was this it was designed that way. What I did when I was first hanging the strings was I was just going by the little marks that were in the brass rod. Brass plated brass brass plated rod. But then I looked at the top hammer, and it had been on an angle, so it had been tweaked. Instead of perfectly straight, it had been tweaked a little bit to hit the strings right. But you can see how they didn't mm -hmm. tweak it quite as much as they, they just tweaked it enough to get all three strings, and this, this was a lot deeper than that, than that. So it was mm. always that way. It was, these were always a little bit, these lines don't line up with these butts. <laughs> 
So they, they were tweaking the trebles a little bit. So maybe maybe what should have happened, and of course this is this is a um, a design flaw, or at least it seems to be, is all of these holes here that are in the pin block behind the plate and then the holes in the plate, everything should have been shifted over like right there. So this pin should be maybe over to the left, I don't know, an eighth of an inch or something. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, I think the, so this whole section, the action can be isn't moved calibrated over. to the pin block, yeah. <laughs> at least in this top third. Yeah, in the top third. So, so in these two, it is. Seems to be. Yeah. So that would, um, I really like what Gavin and Jared said about moving, about moving the action or, or, or moving the, the, this rail here. But then my concern about that is, uh, yeah, if it's, if you're only correcting one section, then it probably wouldn't be good idea. Yeah. Okay, so my, in, in my experience, it's not a good idea to just focus on one, um, one fix. It's not a good idea to, to mm -hmm. get to make up all of your uh, your gap in just one approach, but to kind of use everything and fudge everything a little bit, so it's kind of a measured compromising in everything, rather than, you know, for example, rather than rather than doing them all off. Which the is what they did. They which just is what they did. did one fix. Well, we're gonna tweak everything a little bit to the side. Yeah, that's one approach. I don't like that. And I'll, I'll tell you, I'll tell you, I, I think it's okay to do a little bit, but to do it a lot, one, one thing that comes to mind, I'm sure there are others that I'm not thinking of right off, but one, one thing that comes, that comes to mind is if they're all, if they're all off like this, then you've got that problem oh. where it's going to hit its neighbor. Yeah. Yeah. If that's you go what too I'm, far. That's what I'm worried about now. That's, that's my problem. You're getting there. I don't know. If these are all going to pass, because I know that. See how these are caught? They're, they're, you know. Yeah. No, no, we'll see. Because these aren't tweaked over far enough yet. And a nice thing is, is the I've taken the rest drill off, so it's they're not going to go back as far as they are now. Right. So it may work fine, but that's where our spacing is going to come in to kind of hopefully solve that. So I'm I'm th I'm thinking there are three factors, and if if you can think of a of another factor. Um, let me know, but I think I think there are three factors, all of which need to be compromised slightly, kind of evenly. One is the is the angle of the hammer, and of course, have, have you have you burned shanks before, Jake? Have you? Mm -hmm. Okay, so that that you do with heat. You can also use a heat gun um, if it's easier for you. So that's one factor. The other factor is to is to uh, move the whole hammer butt over as far as you can get it. I know you're you're limited, especially with the billing slimes. The billing slimes is the name of the the brass oh. slimes. So you're you're limited there on how far you can lean it over. And then the third one is you might have to fudge the strings again. Mm -hmm. Here's another one. If you take the hammers off. If the, if the flange is cooperative, you could drill out the hole in the flange just a little bit so that you can shift it over instead of having to lean it to one side. So then you'd have a little bit more play of the screw in the flange. And get a bigger screw or what? No, you? you don't change the size of the screw. You just have a little bit bigger hole, but it still fits under the head of the screw. Then, so you have your, your flange. Saying? Yeah, you drill out the hole a little bit, maybe. A couple of only thousands. Only the flange? Only the flange. The slot kind since, of. Since yeah. it's a metal flange, and oh. then you move the flange over. Yeah. That could work. Yeah, I like that. Hmm. If you if you had a little reaming tool, you could just kind of that way you, ease you can, it on one side. You can get a little bit of a straighter <coughs> hammering. Because looking at it now, I can see now that there's quite a bit of, of uh, turn and also quite a bit of leaning to the side. And short of that, you could also just plug all the holes and re-drill them, but. But then if you did that, you'd need to, 
also change the whippings. You'd have to plug all the whipping holes and redrill all of those. <coughs> and you'd at that point then you'd also if you if you change the whippings, then you'd change also have to let cut off this off and move <laughs> that over. They don't get better at that point. <laughs> Easier. And then you'd uh, let's see. Your spoons would probably be okay. Because you haven't moved the damper levers. And you could, yeah. You, yeah. And the damper, the spoons are, are leaning anyway. So you could just lean, yeah, anyway. Well, I mean, if you go about correcting a design, then, you know. Then there's a lot of, yeah. Just like everything else, everything affects the next step. <laughs> well, I think uh, I think let's start let's start with those three. Yeah. Maybe maybe try if if those aren't if those aren't working. And and by the way, don't do the whole thing. Just do one or two. Okay. Do do one or two. Change the string. And I think if if those three are still insufficient, then then Gavin's idea. I think. I mean, we want to we want to go for the simplest first, and I think uh, the the most extreme would be would be redesigning just this third of the action, uh -huh. and in in the middle would be to take out all of the all of the uh, flanges and and um, enlargen the whole margin, enlarge enlarge and enlarge the whole. Um, that that kind of sounds. Not drastic, but but a little bit more. What about this? It might be way too drastic. But could you take the this rail back here that the whippings and the hammers everything screws into, cut and it off. cut it off, and then just like put a quarter or eighth inch spacer in, and then move the entire thing over that way. You could screw it in and glue it in. You probably would have enough room to attach. A spacer, and then you don't have to move those these two rails. So, so you'd be cutting it off way. on one side of the bracket, and then attaching some kind of a sandwich. <coughs> huh. That would be like Gavin's fix, except it'd fix the whippings too. Mm -hmm. Well, the whip. So the whippings also attach here. They attach here. Do two, two spacers. Hmm. Well, if these are fairly straight, and as they, as you get over here, um, maybe just moving the strings, because moving the whole thing might create the same problem on that half. Yeah, the problem is, uh, I, c I could maybe just move all these <coughs> strings that way, but you, you're going to... Well, one thing to, to get those bolts. One but thing to determine is to here you do is if you need the same amount of correction on this end as you do on that end. Mm -hmm. yeah. Because if you don't, then it's just it, it's a matter of spacing as yeah, well as okay. As yeah. Mm -hmm. and so that uh, yeah, we have more look complex at that. as well. That. So I really, I mean, I really like Jared's thinking. That would be a scary cut to make, though. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you'd also have to adjust the let off bar, I think, and maybe even this one. Yeah, you'd be chopping off the top you'd third of the action and, and making it larger. Mm -hmm. You'd have to plug these two holes and then redrill those over a little bit. That might be the most comprehensive fix. And then, and then figure out some way if of, you need the same amount of correction yeah on each that's the first thing. Mm -hmm. um, hmm. that's a scary fix <laughs> <laughs> living dangerously yeah that's totally living dangerous. dangerous the operation went well but we lost the patient <laughs> <laughs> yeah it's, well, sorry your piano is a total loss but my team is now we're so better more, trained. Yeah, more experience. We have experience now. <laughs> <laughs> try it on a genius heart first. <laughs> I like that idea. <laughs> Even that piano that she'll remain nameless. <laughs> okay. So, um, Don, are you good? Yeah, that's that's good. Be great idea. I think. 
I think I just need to revisit this whole end of it and just don't do Jared's idea until it's not the first straw. Talking to me first. It's yeah. the last <laughs> last straw. Yeah. Okay, let's talk about trap work. So uh, we can always tell the customer we had a terrible fire in the shop. Yeah. <laughs> so sorry. Where's the trap on this one? We'd have to come up with an insurance money, though. Yeah, that's no. true. <laughs> Check your insurance policy first. Do you know if a... Uh Picture was drawn of the trap work in this before it was removed. I didn't take it out. I took it out and I didn't draw a picture. Didn't draw a picture. Okay, so you get to fit things together. Yeah, that's figure things out. That's why I needed the, some guidance. Okay. Um, so uh, so it's a lot easier. It's a lot easier to draw a picture at the beginning, and also. When you take all these things out to uh, to put directions on them, like especially where where it won't be. Let's see, let's see, let's see. Buried treasure, thirty paces. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. I guess that's fairly self-explanatory. You can tell which way the pedal is. You can tell which way it's up. Yeah, <coughs> yeah, 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 that's true. Yeah. So this is this isn't too bad. Um, but sometimes, sometimes it, 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 uh, it's so obvious when it's all put together and you think, oh, I'll just take everything apart and then, and then I'll be able to put it back together, no problem. But then it just looks like a jumble of parts and, and you, you know, which, where does this go? I didn't realize this part was so similar to that part. Right. Which one is the and right Does it go part? that way or does it go that way? But you know this. This should be this should be a fairly easy puzzle because that's obviously going up, and this is obviously, you know, where it attaches to the pedal. So that shouldn't be too bad. Okay, what we're trying to do, the goal is, uh, is we're trying to uh, basically renew everything. The way to do that is draw a picture, take everything apart, and then and. And I like to put instructions on here underneath usually where you're not gonna where nobody's gonna see it. I, I put pedals this direction. You know, I'll write, maybe I'll write this is the this attaches to the center pedal or whatever. So there's just no there's no question about any of it. Once this is all off, take the take the bottom panel off. Sometimes there's cracks in the bottom panel. It's it's no longer just one panel. Especially where the piano has been moved on the on that panel, so all of the weight of the piano is right on that on the panel can crack, and uh, there are repairs for that. So there are there are several repairs, and we can get into the details of those repairs um, another time. But uh, basically, if you've got if you've got Boards that you know run the run that direction. It's it's just a matter of, of re-gluing them. I like to put if it's if it's towards the edge, what I'll do is I'll drill holes on this side if it's close enough, mm -hmm. and then I'll put dowels in there so that so that it, you know acts as one. So that when you have the weight of the piano, all of the dowels are helping the glue joint. If it's if it's close to the middle, where you where you can drill that far or it's harder to